3G standards was evolved from 2G standards, but with the introduction of certain new components. So uh, 3G standards, in short, it provides global multimedia mobile communication. Globally, it was accepted, and the fragmentation problem that was already solved because of the adoption of GSM network. So again, here the fragmentation problem is solved because it is globally adopted and it fulfills the requirement of multiple services as well as high speed. High speed in comparison to your 2G and also it fulfills several service services. And the minimum data rate for 3G services or 3G standards, 380. 4 kb per second and it can vary up to 2 mb per second and it has an evolution from 2g standard so it is evolved from 2g standard so 2g we had cdma and other standard that was in 2g that is is 136 both we have already studied and it was evolved as cdma 2000 and this one as WCDMA or UMTS. These two are 2G standards and these two are 3G standards and these are evolved from the their uh, predecessors CDMA and IS-136M. These two we have to study in the coming lectures. Now, uh, what are different characteristics or the salient features of 3G standards? So it supports both packet switch networks as well as circuit switch networks so that is it supports your voice communication as well as your data packets it further supports roaming roaming facility is there there is a particular unit which is called as mme which is there in 3g as well as in the 4g that is mobility management equipment that we will discuss later in this lecture and uh, it has backward compatibility as well backward compatibility backward compatibility and interoperability that means 3g standards they are backward compatible with the 2g standards and also interoperability means uh, you must have seen your mobile stations which have uh, when you select mobile network mode you have the flexibility of selecting 2g oblique 3g oblique 4g so this is what we call 4G is backward compatible with the 2G. It supports 2G as well as 3G networks. And it is compatible with running many services simultaneously. Many services simultaneously means you can run many services simultaneously, which means that while you are connected on a call, on a voice call, you can have access to several other services, like you can watch the videos, you can have HD streaming, you can play online gaming, etc. So simultaneously, you can do a lot of, uh, you can in, uh, launch many services in the 3G networks. Now in 3G network, the architecture uh, is something like, uh, let me draw the architecture. The basic architecture is there, that is uh, that's of GSM architecture. Basic architect, you will have here a mobile station, but I will write here as UE instead of mobile station here i will write instead of bts as node b you can have any number of node b's like you had bts node b and then you can have here rnc rnc and again here rnc but in the previous architecture that is of gprs architecture there you had msc MSC is again here, but RNC is a component of MSC itself. And then this RNC may be connected to another component which is handling the circuit switching part. And this RNC may be connected to another component which is handling the packet switching part. So this packet switching means it is connected to PDA networks, that is your internet services. And this one. I would say that it is connected to PSTN networks, that is your landline networks. And these are NCs are interconnected. This 
node B is also connected. And here you have this air interface that is through mobile radio uh, waves, mobile radio waves. And this user equipment is your basically mobile station. Mobile station will contain your mobile phone and a SIM that is inserted to it. But the terminology here is different. Instead of mobile station, we are writing here user equipment. In second generation, we were using, uh, we were naming it as mobile station because there the purpose, the main purpose is to call, uh, is, is to send the voice signals only. But here, now you have both uh, voice call as well as data services, and you have more emphasis on the data services. So that's why it is renamed as user equipment because now you can watch video you can have uh, online streaming you can uh, surf the network and that's why they have uh, renamed uh, they have changed the terminology uh, only because earlier you had only phones now you have smartphone that is from 3g onwards and this node b uh, is just like your B bts and it contains your transmitter as well as receiver and this particular unit is called as base station subsystem. Base station subsystem system, as we have already studied. And uh, this is RNC is your radio network controller. RNC is your radio network controller. Radio means you have a communication from this node B to mobile station that is through radio waves. And you may have the communication from RNC to node B through radio waves or a dedicated leased line. So you can have a radio link or a leased line link from RNC to node B. And everything that is related to radio, that is through the radio waves, that is the channel assignment, the frequency assignment, uh, that is handled by this RNC, that is radio network controller. And it is a component or a subcomponent of your MSC, that is your mobile switching center. This node b and rnc node b plus rnc this is your ut ran ut ran that is universal terrestrial radio access network universal terrestrial terrestrial radio access network including this node b and node c up to this it is called as ut ran radio access technology example that is your WCDMA that we have to study later uh, in the coming lecture. RNC can support several or multiple number of node B's that is your BTS and it also uh, allocates and checks various radio resources that is frequency uh, the code in order to encode the data that is also a job of RNC the assignment of frequency and also the time slot allocation that is done by this RNC component that is a subcomponent of your MSC. Further, uh, there are certain uh, things like uh, call admission control schemes and that you have studied in uh, prioritizing the handoff or you have to give the priority, uh, priority to, to the ongoing call or, the, or to the new call. That is uh, call admission control, load control, etc. That is handled by the RNC itself. In circuit switching, for example, if you have a circuit switching domain, Circuit switching means when you have voice communication, RNC signal will be given to your MSC. MSC, you already know it contains HLR, you have VLR, you have EIR that uh, checks the IMI, uh, IMEI number. And on the basis of this number, if that is valid, uh, they classify the equipment as black, gray, and white. Black, which are basically the fraudulent, gray, they uh, reside between. Uh, good one and the fraudulent equipment and the white they are basically the legitimate equipments and packet switch switch network that means you want to access the internet in that case rnc will be connected to sgsn and this sgsn is further connected to ggsn that we have studied yesterday sgsn is your serving gateway support network uh, support node and this is your gateway gprs port node this is connected to your pdn the internet and sgn is the local serving node that uh, uh, that 
uh, gives the reachability state of your mobile uh, mobile station it is a service of this sgsn node to provide the services to the mobile station so packet switching domain mein aisa rehta hai ki rnc ke paas agar ip packet aaya if that packet uh, has some payload along with some header and trailer that will be transmitted to sgsn and then finally to the ggsn and ggsn say that will be uh, sent to some particular server like www.google.com pe request jayegi then in response the response packets will be sent back to the same path okay so this is a brief introduction about uh, your 3g networks now we will see a brief introduction about uh, 4g introduction to 4g 4g or lte long term evolution the actual uh, 4g systems basically are lte a long term evolution advanced the thing is you will in advanced version you will get more bandwidth as compared to only 4g or lte but the basic uh, architecture remains same like uh, that you have seen for gprs or gsm in gsm you did not have any data support in gprs you have seen uh, certain nodes are added like sgsn and ggsn cg bg uh, these nodes are added to provide the data support and then in the 3g you have seen there are uh, they are evolved from the 2g standards but with different terminology with more bandwidth and now in lte again there is no new architecture the architecture is same you have one component which is radio network and you have another component that is called as core network these two components are the main architecture building blocks of your 4g and you have you can have 1 gb per second of data rate 1 gb 1 gb per second of data rate for stationary users and you can have 100 mb per second for high mobile users 4g is basically uh, an evolved architecture and it is a fully packet switched architecture fully packet switched architecture here the channels for the voice communication are uh, are those which are used for the data transmission that is for, uh, for that they are used for the transmission of ip packets jin channels pe ip packets transmit hote hain they are also used for the transmission of your voice signals and this uh, sort of architecture is called as system architecture evolution system architecture evolution because it is not a new architecture basically it is evolved from the previous one and it supports high mobility the main purpose of 4g architecture is to support the mobility the architecture should be simple that is the packet switch nodes should be organized in a smart way uh, and it has a bandwidth range uh, you can say uh, it can range from 1.4 megahertz of spectrum to 20 megahertz in between you can have 10 15 megahertz as well even 3 5 megahertz so it depends upon the operator even you can have 3 or 5 megahertz of bandwidth it depends upon the operator like in uh, india i think jio is using uh, maybe 15 or 20 megahertz and airtel may be using some lesser bandwidth i'm not sure about this you can check it uh, you can check it right from your uh, mobile phones there are certain codes Um, by dialing those code you can see which particular uh, frequency band is being used by your network provider so uh, i think jio is using either 20 or 50 megahertz of frequency spectrum and uh, um, uh, i think uh, airtel is using some lesser bandwidth maybe 15 or 10 and uh, uh, further i will say that uh, 300 mb per second is a speed 300 mb per second is a speed that is for downlink traffic and it is around 75 mb per second for uplink traffic and the multiple access technique is basically used as ofdma or sc fdma uh, that is for downlink as well as for uplink respectively ofdma and fdma these are the techniques they are used as multiple access techniques the architecture similar to your 3g architecture you have 
here user equipment like you had in 3G, but I will write here EUE. And you have here a node B, node B, but instead of node B, I will write here E node B, and uh, you can have any number of E node Bs, E node B, and then Further, you have a bigger component that is the main component of the 4G architecture. And this is called as EPC, that is your evolved packet core. Here you have one component that is called as MME, Mobility Management Equipment. It is connected to HSS, that is your home uh, subscriber server. Then you have SGW serving gateway, and you have PGW PDN gateway. PDN gateway means you are connected to internet, and no packet switch uh, circuit switching is here, only the packet switch network. And this particular portion in the earlier network that is in 3G, it is called as UT RAN, that is combination of node B and RNC. But here, this particular part is your EUT RAN. The communication from this point to this point is your wireless. Here you have connectivity to these units. They are interconnected as well. And EPC, that is your evolved packet core, here you have this mobility management equipment that takes care of the handoff and the mobility of the user of the uh, this user equipment. And here HSS, that is your home subscriber server, which contains the profiles of all the users in that particular network. And this lower part, SGW and PGW, that takes care of your IP packets. E is here used just to represent that it is not a new network it is an evolved network from the previous one that's why they are using e user equipment and e ut ran universal terrestrial radio access network this is basically the similar architecture with more support to the mobility that is handled by mme and this mme uh, as i said it is handling the mobility and that is possible because of the high data rate Okay, there are some features uh, of this LTE like online gaming with multimedia, mobile HD, TV, broadband content streaming, data rates are 200 to 300 MB per second for downlink, uplink it varies from 500 to 100 MB per second, although I wrote uh, 75 MB per second is for uplink, but that is an average value, but it varies from 500 to 100 MB per second. Also the downlink data rate is 200 to 300 MB per second. Further, it supports uh, TDD and FDD based on, uh, it is based on OFDMA, that is orthogonal frequency division multiple access technique. And the modulation technique is uh, here 64 QAM or even in these days 256 QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation technique is used. So here uh, in 64, you can say six bits, two is for six, that is 64, six bits per symbol, they, uh, they are modulated. Further, it supports multiple antenna with advanced processing, that is MIMO, multiple input, multiple out output. We install number of antenna that transmission and reception uh, just to make the system reliable. Okay, so this is about your uh, uh, 4G architecture or 4G services.